praise. The online church, ladies and gentlemen, reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what our purpose is, to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may say, well, what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. There ain't nothing fake about the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The world is full of bad news. People manufacture stuff. I mean, there are groups that specialize in fake news just to throw people off. But the gospel is the good news, ladies and gentlemen. What is the good news? That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. This is what we preach. This is what we're commissioned to do. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. God wants everyone to hear the word. He wants everyone to be saved. He has made it possible that all can be saved. Save from what, you may say? Save from destruction. Save from eternal death. Save from sin. Save from condemnation. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross for you and for me and for the whole world. He did not count it robbery to leave heaven and to come to the earth and live for 33 years die on the cross. They nailed him to the cross and crucified him. And he took our sins and our iniquities into his body on the cross and died for us. So ladies and gentlemen, there is no excuse for anyone to go to hell. Jesus has made it possible. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He said, all power has been given unto me. And he said to us, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed on heaven. So ladies and gentlemen, the good news is you do not have to perish in your sins. The good news is you do not have to continue in sin. If sin has gripped you, you can break loose. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. First of all, you must be born again. You must be born again. You may say, well, how can I be born again? That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's a promise from God. And God is no respecter of persons. Whoever confesses Jesus Christ to be the son of God who died for their sins and believes in their heart shall be saved. We are so thankful. We praise God. We're so thankful to come to you today. We th we're thankful that our, our friends in Dubai are online, our friends in Kenya, our friends in Tanzania, our friends in Europe, our friends in South America, we thank God that many of you will watch this via the, the, the video, and we just praise God for how this word is going forth throughout the whole world. I want to thank God for this online church. There are many online churches. We are working together. We are working in, in unison, in harmony, to present the word of God. We are parts of the body of Christ. We work together. There is no competition. Jesus has called us to preach the gospel, to go into all the world, to let everyone know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died on the cross, raised himself from the dead, and he's soon to come back. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is soon to come back. You don't want to be caught in unreadiness. You must be born again. The Bible says you must be born again. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, I joined the church. I joined the church when I was 12 years old. Or you may say, I was baptized when I was an infant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, joining the church and being baptized as an infant does not save anyone. You must be 
born again. The scripture says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he died on the cross, raised himself from the dead, you shall be saved. When you make that confession, you are saved. I pray that you will make that confession today and be saved. And then after you get saved, ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to teach today about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm continuing today in my series on the baptism of the Holy Ghost, on this series, why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Today, I'm going to talk about one of two of the gifts of the Spirit, the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom. So I want to thank you for joining us on the Back to Basics Ministries online church. We're only on here for about 45 minutes. So let's pray and let's then we get into the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Oh, God, I thank you for this new day. Thank you for my friends online. Thank you for their families. Thank you for the blessings you're pouring out upon them. Thank you, Lord God, for encouraging them. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you that your hand is upon the body of Christ. Thank you for your love for all mankind. Thank you that you're going to uh, add souls to the kingdom of God today. Thank you for those who are going to get saved today. Thank you for those who will be delivered. Thank you for those who will be healed. Most of all, we thank you because you are the savior. You're the healer. You are the deliverer. Thank you for keeping us, Lord. Now, Lord, I thank you for this ministry, one of many ministries you have all over the world, preaching the gospel online. And Lord God, bless all of our online pastors and preachers teachers, apostles, and, and prophets. Bless each and every one. Bless the body of Christ as we go about doing what you've called us to do. Lord, help us to work together as the body of Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit day after day, Lord God, and we thank you. Now, Lord, let your mighty work be done. Stretch forth your mighty hand to save and deliver today. Help the people to hear and receive your word Father, we thank you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord God. You made us to worship you. You said in Psalm 139, 14, we are made fearfully and wonderfully that we may praise and worship you. And so we thank you, Father. Now, Lord, bless the people as we learn about the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, my brothers and my sisters, we're looking at this mighty uh, anointing of the Holy Spirit, the blessing that God has given to the people so that uh, people will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We just praise God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Many people have not been taught about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so it is the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen who gives us the power to do the will of God. I need the Holy Spirit every day, every moment of every day. You need the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so many people have been misguided and, and taught erroneously about the Holy Spirit. And God wants the church to know about the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and God created you and me for the purpose of worshiping him. That is why we exist. But you know, there's, there's a an evil ent entity, the devil. The devil has tried to rob God of his creation. The devil uh, robbed Adam and Eve of the glorious uh, life in the Garden of Eden. And because Adam and Eve disobeyed God and listened to the devil in the form of the serpent, sin entered the world. Therefore, all men and women Boys and girls, all people are born in sin. 
We're shaped in iniquity. We are born separated from God. This grieved God so much when Adam and Eve sinned that God, uh, uh, he could have destroyed them. He could have destroyed mankind, but he's got a plan. And God's plan included salvation through his only begotten son. The first Adam sinned, but the second Adam, a.k.a. Jesus, obeyed God even unto death. Jesus came into the world. Jesus promised God his father, I will leave heaven. I will go to earth. I will live there and I will die on the cross. I'll pay the price, father. You prepare me a body. I'll enter into the earth as a person. I'll live as a human being. I will not sin and I will pay whatever price is required so that mankind can be reconciled unto you. And that is um, the whole purpose of the cross. Jesus died on the cross to reconcile us. What Adam had stolen from God, Jesus uh, brought back to God. Jesus made it possible that all mankind can have a relationship with God the Father. Jesus paid the price so that we do not have to suffer eternal death. Yes, Satan is active today. He is very busy trying to destroy people's lives. He doesn't want you to listen to the gospel. He does not want you to get saved. He does not want you to get uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He does not want you to live holy. But God has purposed the Holy Spirit so that we can have the power to live a holy life. God knew and he knows that we cannot live holy without his help. And so God sent the Holy Spirit Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, after he rose from the dead, he told his disciples, he said, now tarry ye in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Jesus uh, told his disciples and he told us, wait for the promise. In other words, before you dash off into the various parts of the world to do ministry, to preach and teach and whatever I've called you to do, wait for the helper. Wait for the helper. Ladies and gentlemen, we're preaching these next several weeks about the helper, the helper, the comforter, the one who comes alongside us and works with us and guides us into all truth. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. In the Greek, he's called the Hagios Pneuma, the Spirit of God, the Ruah, the breath of God, the third person of the Trinity. He comes to live inside of every believer. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you need to listen to this message and realize that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Whatever God has called you to do, you can do it. Why? Because God has sent the helper, the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples to wait for the promise, and they waited in Jerusalem and on the day of Pentecost, according to Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit fell upon the church, came upon the church, baptized them with the power to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples out of all people. And ladies and gentlemen, this same power is available to us, to you and me. We cannot do the work of God without the Holy Spirit. Many try, many try. They try to use their good looks, their charisma, their money, their power, their political influence, but that is not going to get it, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that wins men and women to God. It's the Holy Spirit who keeps us. It's the Holy Spirit who keeps us from being overwhelmed by the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, because of the Holy Spirit, we now have power in us to rebuke the devil. We can now, because of the Holy Spirit, we can lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. We shall speak in new tongues. We shall cast out unclean spirits. We shall heal the sick. We shall preach the gospel. Why? Because the helper has come. And now God wants you to receive him. God wants you to honor him and receive the Holy Spirit. And so I, I say to you today, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit 
by faith. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, a few verses there. The Bible says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts. Listen to this. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, there are diversities of gifts, but one Spirit. We're, I'm going to give you the list of, of, of the, the, the gifts. In fact, the Bible is right here in the scripture. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. But the manifestation, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So all of these gifts operate differently, but the same Lord operates and orchestrates the gifts to work. Let's uh, look down to verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 12. Verse 8, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that's one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And God, the Holy Spirit, gives these gifts out to whomever he will. And he gives them according to his knowledge, his wisdom. And so these gifts are available to you, ladies and gentlemen. You can ask the Holy Spirit to give you gifts. The Bible says we're to seek the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God has equipped us to go through this world and to fulfill our mission because of the Holy Spirit who gives us gifts. There are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's a list of nine gifts of the Spirit that God gives to believers to help believers. And these are the gifts of, of the Spirit. Then later on in verse tw verses 28 to 31, we see the gifts to the church. So God gives gifts to the believers. Then he gives to the corporate. He gives gifts to the corporate church. The gifts to the believers are the following the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of working of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discerning of spirits, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues. These nine, when we as the body of Christ receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and operate with the gifts God gives us, and do this diligently, we work corporately as the body of Christ to bring about God's will on the earth. These are gifts God has given us for to strengthen us, to do his will. So ladies and gentlemen, when, when God, the Holy Spirit, gives the gifts after you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and he gives the gifts to you, he may give you a set of gifts and he may give me a different set of gifts. We're not to be jealous of one another, but because we're in the body of Christ, I am to allow the gifts God has given me to work in me, to help mankind, to promote the body of Christ, to promote Jesus Christ, and you are to operate in your gifts. There should be no jealousy, no schism in, in the body of Christ. There should be no schism in what we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan wants to bring jealousy. Satan will have people saying uh, angry at one person because he's got the gift of healing. He can work miracles. She can speak in tongues. She can interpret. Well, why can't you do this? 
See, Satan is a liar. Ladies and gentlemen, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and operate in what God gives you so that you and I and the rest of the body of Christ, as we do what God has called us to do, we fitly join together as the body of Christ and we build up the body of Christ. We build up the church and we help the church, the which is the body of Christ, to do the will of God. Don't fall for that okie doke of being divided. Don't let Satan divide the church. Don't let him divide the body of Christ. Some of you out there feel that you don't belong to the body of Christ because nobody calls you. Nobody sends you an email. Nobody sends you a text message. Nobody sends you an instant message. You have not been forgotten. God is with you. Stir up the gift in you. Worship God every day. Praise the Lord. We've got a brother and sister on line with us today. David uh, Carter and his family, they live all the way in Dubai. They chose to believe God and move from Texas to go to work in Dubai. They left their family. They left their friends. They left their fellowship. And, 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 and I know there might be times they feel in Dubai that they're forsaken and all alone. But David and his wife and family are not forsaken. God placed them there. God's got a plan for them. They are part of the body of Christ. And so we've got to encourage David. We've got to encourage our friends in Kenya. We've got to encourage our friends in Russia. We've got to encourage our friends in Israel. We've got to encourage our friends in America. We've got to encourage them with the gifts that we have. We've got to worship God and we've got to do what God has called us to do at the same time, encourage David, encourage Elijah in Kenya, encourage all the other people and work together as one body. Ladies and gentlemen, we need one another. I need David Carter. He needs me. We need one another. We need uh, uh, Brother Jacko in Kenya. We need our friends in South America. We need one another. We're not to think of ourselves better than they are, but work together in love, ladies and gentlemen. We walk by faith in love. We encourage one another. God has given us the Holy Spirit, the gifts to uh, encourage one another, to build up one another. And he's given us the power to, to rebuke the devil. He's given us the power to put the devil under our feet. And he's given us the power to preach the gospel so that unbelievers can be saved. It can be done, ladies and gentlemen. So we have a responsibility not to allow any schism, not to let allow anything negative. We've got the responsibility to cast out demons. We've got the responsibility to pray for one another, to love one another, to come to one another's rescue, because all of us are part of the body of Christ. The church makes up what is called the body of Christ. We are Jesus's body here on earth to accomplish his will on earth. Now listen to this from 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore, is it, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Ladies and gentlemen, there should be no schism, no division in the body. If the foot says, I'm not of the body, uh, then the foot's out of place. If the eye says, I have no need of you all, then the eye is out of place. God has 
placed the parts of the body where he wants us to be. And he's given us the power to love one another, to work with one another, and to encourage one another. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body, and it hath pleased him. So God has set us in his body, and he's given us responsibility. My responsibility might be different from David's. David's responsibility might be different from Sister Joyce. Sister Joyce's responsibility might be different from Sister Betty, but we're all part of the body of Christ with responsibility. And God has given us the authority to accomplish what he's told us to do by the baptism of the Holy Spirit and by the gifts of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at briefly the gifts of wisdom and the gift of knowledge in reverse order. The gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom. I want to share with you how the gift of knowledge operates in your life on a daily basis. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to ask God, Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fill me with the gifts because the gifts will help you to accomplish why, what God has called you to do. The gifts of the Holy Spirit take out, take, take the drudgery out of serving the Lord. The first gift I want to talk about is the gift of knowledge. This is the gift that I believe will manifest itself most in your daily life. And God having perfect and absolute knowledge of all things, uh, he knows that we are created imperfect and we're limited. This means that we need to receive words of knowledge from God because we don't know everything. God knows everything. And he and there are times when we don't know, but he can give us a word of knowledge so that we can know. And so the word of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, is a gift of the Holy Spirit where God will speak to you and he will tell you, reveal to you what's going on. He will do that Marvin Gaye thing. What's going on? God will reveal to you when you don't know, he will reveal to you what's going on. And when he reveals this to you, he gives you a word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is simply the Holy Spirit transmitting his specific knowledge to you on something that you would have no ability or means to be able to, to know about with your own limited intelligence and knowledge levels. In other words, God will give you a word of knowledge and explain to you something that you don't know and that you could not know. Even with your PhD, with your great intelligence, there are, there are things that you and I don't know and God wants us to know and he will give us supernatural revelation. And he does this, ladies and gentlemen, on a daily basis. He does this in our lives on a a daily basis. I'm going to give you some examples in a, in a few moments. These words of knowledge that you can receive direct from the Holy Spirit can literally cover an infinite number of things in your daily life. They can cover anything from something very trivial, such as where you have misplaced your car keys. Now, almost everybody who drives has misplaced those car keys, or where's the TV remote uh, to give you, giving you life-saving knowledge on how to solve an impending crisis or emergency. There are emergencies that come up. God might speak a word of knowledge to you and tell you about the emergency that's coming up. I've had experiences where God has said to me, as I've been driving down the highway, and you have had this too, and and you hear the Lord say to you, slow down, there's an accident around the corner, or slow down, a few miles down the road, there's an accident, or be alert, a, a, a deer or an animal is going to run across the street, So and God gives you a word of knowledge. This is not something you, you conjured up in your mind. It's not something that something said to me or a voice said to me. 
It's the Holy Spirit giving you a word of knowledge. Here are some more specific examples of where you can receive a direct word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit concerning just about anything and everything in your daily life. Then I'm going to highlight a couple of these. Take, for example, how to solve a simple math problem at school if you're a student. There are students struggling. How do I solve this algebra problem? How do I solve this calculus? How do I solve this equation? And it'll tear your hair out and pull your hair out. And, 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 and I want to say to you, Christian students, pray. Ask God. Give me a word of knowledge. God will give you the answer. God will give you the answer to that problem. Or you students, you're taking exams and tests. Christian students ought to excel on exams and tests because you have the power. You can pray for the answers. Now, if you haven't studied, I don't, I don't know if you ought to tempt God. But if you have studied and you've studied and, and done your homework assignments and you've been alert and studied, but uh, that answer slips your mind, you ask God, God, give me a word of knowledge. Give me this answer. I have done this on many exams as a student. Even now, uh, I do this. God, what's the answer? Even as I take graduate courses, uh, God, what's the answer? And the Holy Spirit will reveal the answer to you. Uh, here's one. Where have you misplaced your car keys? Everybody's lost their car keys on one occasion. I remember many years ago when I took my family out in the country to visit my sister and her family, I decided to go jogging. So I went jogging for about an hour by myself. And when I came back to my sister's house, I could not find my car keys. And I remember that my car keys were in my pocket when I went jogging. And so everybody, my sister, my brother-in-law, my uh, nephew and nieces, uh, my wife and children, we all started looking. We started retracing my steps. We had to walk about a mile, the, the distance that I had jogged, to retrace my steps. And looking, we're looking everywhere for the keys. And ladies and gentlemen, here's where God gave me a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit said to me, and we were praying as we were going. The Holy Spirit said to me, now, at a certain place, while you were jogging, you stopped. You reached into your back pocket and you pulled out your handkerchief to blow your nose. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what the Holy Spirit said to me. And that is exactly what I had done. God said, I'm going to. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to lead you to that spot. And I will show you where you stopped and where you pulled your handkerchief out of your pocket and blew your nose. He said, it's at this place where you lost your keys. God gave me a word of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and I walked to that place. And I remember the Holy Spirit said, this is the place. Now stop. And I looked down on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, my car keys were there. Hallelujah. So God gives us a word of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. And he does this in our lives on a daily basis. Knowledge, God can give us the knowledge of what a, a certain scripture verse may mean and how it can apply to our own personal life. So when you're reading scripture and you don't understand the scripture, ask God, Lord, explain this scripture to me. And God will give you a word of knowledge on that scripture. That's a gift to every believer. How to properly witness to a, an unsaved family member. God will show you. He'll give you a word of knowledge on how to win a family member to Christ. Here's another one. How to solve a marital dispute. Those of you who are married, you've had disputes. The Holy Spirit will give you a word of wisdom on how to solve a marital dispute. God might tell you, hey, David, go for a walk. Hey, Leroy, go for a walk. Or, hey, Leroy, shut your mouth. Be quiet. Don't argue. Or just listen. 
or go to the store and buy some ice cream. God will show you. He'll give you a word of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. He does this in our lives on a daily basis. He may show you how to start up a new business. He'll give you a new a word of knowledge. God has spoken to me on many occasions. I remember God spoke to me one, one day back in October of 1975. And I had strep throat, ladies and gentlemen, strep throat. I couldn't eat. I couldn't even swallow the pills the doctor had given me. I was afraid I was going to die. And then after about three days of that, I couldn't go to work. My family had gone somewhere, and I was in the house all by myself. And here's how the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom work together. Just like with the keys, how to find the keys. God will give you a word of wisdom to show you what to do. He'll give you a word of knowledge to tell you what's going on, and he'll give you a word of wisdom to show you what to do. God spoke to me and said, now, I want you to go into the bathroom, and I want you to get on your knees, and I want you to bow your head over the bathtub, and I'm going to bring all that inflammation that's in your throat, all that pus, all that mucus, I'm going to bring it all up. Now go into the bathroom and get on your knees. This is the word of knowledge that the Lord had given me along with the word of wisdom. Wisdom shows you how to apply the word of knowledge. And I went in the bathroom, ladies and gentlemen. This was in October of 1975. I remember it vividly. And I felt, I got down on my knees and I put my head in, in over the tub and all that gunk, all that poison came up out of my throat. I just coughed it. Or it just ran out. I know that sounds gooey, but that's how God delivered me. And, and after uh, it all cleared and my throat was cleared again, and I knew I was healed by a miracle, then the Lord spoke to me, ladies and gentlemen. He spoke to me, gave me another word of knowledge. He said, now I am calling you to preach the gospel. I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That was 1975. That's how I got the call to preach, through a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. God healed me through a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. So God does this in our lives on a daily basis, and he does not want us to be ignorant. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of knowledge is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And this gift is available to every believer. It's available to every believer. So, ladies and gentlemen, ask the Holy Spirit to give you gifts. Uh, if you don't know what your gifts are, ask the Lord, Lord, what are my gifts? By the way, in our Paul Begley School of Prophecy, uh, next semester begins on June 10th, and I'm the dean of the school. We have a marvelous course called Gifted to Succeed, where you can as assess and analyze the spiritual gifts God has given you. So if you're interested in that, contact me. It's a marvelous, life-changing course. I've taken it. It is awesome. Praise God. It goes into depth, into more detail about the gift of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Praise God as God prepares you for ministry. So the gift of knowledge is available, ladies and gentlemen. And in summary, the gift of knowledge is the Holy Spirit giving you information that you don't know and that you cannot know with your finite mind, no matter what degrees, no matter what level of intelligence you have, God gives you the knowledge. And I use as an example uh, number one, I used the example of finding my car keys when I jogged about a mile and lost my keys, came back, and didn't know where they were. God showed me where they were. And then um, I used another example of how God called me to the ministry and spoke his word, and told me to uh, go preach the gospel. But before that, he healed me by a miracle. He told me what to do to get the miracle told me where to go, and I did it, and God performed the miracle. So God gave me that word of knowledge along with the word of wisdom. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue, and, and very briefly, the word of wisdom. The next gift will work in conjunction with the word, word of knowledge. You'll find that the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom work together. And ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have people come to you with questions, and, and, and you can ask God for the answers, and God will give you the answers. That's why if, if you're living right and, and, and you're, you're not hiding, harboring sin in your life, you can talk to God when people question you, people come to you for advice. You can seek God for supernatural advice, and God can give you a word of knowledge for them. God can give you a word of wisdom for them. And be sure that it's from God. Be sure that it's from God. Okay? Um, this next gift is the word of wisdom. And a word of wisdom will give you the ability to be able to properly apply the knowledge that you may already have on a particular situation. The word of wisdom, wisdom, God wants to show you how to apply the answer that he's given you. God may say, I want you to start a business. That's the word of knowledge. The word of wisdom is God, how do I start my business? And then you wait on the Lord and he will show you. God will show you who to ask to assist you. When we organized Back to Basics Ministry, Back to Basics Ministries back in 1996, God showed me the people to ask to be on our board of our, our board of directors. God showed me when to start the ministry. He uh, guided us through the uh, incorporation process. And, and God has guided this ministry ever since. God has taken this ministry from one level to another. This ministry started with uh, producing videotapes for cable television, for our cable television audience. And now we're online, uh, online live reaching nations for the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. And it's all because we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and then God shows us how to get it done. I can't do it all by myself. I'm so glad he brings people to my life like you and, 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 and your family, like David Carter and uh, Ryan Trogler. And uh, I thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Praise God. We need one another and we support one another. We're part of the body of Christ, fulfilling the mission that God has given us on this, on this earth. Uh, look at the word of wisdom uh, and how it operates. Look at this example. You have just found out that your spouse has been cheating on you. You will need now God's wisdom on exactly how to handle this crisis. Imagine a man finds out his wife's been cheating on him or the wife finds out the husband's been cheating. And the first thing the world will tell you to do, Satan wants you to get a gun, blow their heads off or throw hot grits and gravy in their face or beat them with a baseball bat or poison them or, or suffocate them while they're asleep. I mean, Satan will give you all kinds of things and, and, and not don't, don't just kill your spouse, but kill, uh, uh, the spouse and lover. That's what the world wants you to do. That's what Satan wants you to do. But ladies and gentlemen, seek God. Seek God. It's very painful. It's very painful in, in situations. But you've got to seek God. God, show me what to do. Lord, I want to do the right thing. There are prisons full of people who have sought revenge and vengeance and have murdered people and hurt people because uh, they were angered. Uh, there are many men, men in prison and women in prison whose spouses cheated on them, lied on them, and, and they did not seek the wisdom of God but took matters in their own hands. But God will give you a word of wisdom and he will show you what to do. Here's another situation. Your boss has just given you a new tough assignment and you're not sure on how to get the job done properly. You will now need God's knowledge and wisdom on how to get this new assignment successfully completed. Praise God. You might have to fast and pray. Seek the Lord. Ask God 
Lord, show me how. Show me what people to, to add uh, to my assignment. Show me how. And God will help you to fulfill this assignment. I'm a witness to this. When Pastor Paul Begley asked me two years ago to, to organize and put together a school of prophecy for him, uh, I had to fast and pray and seek the Lord. And then Sister Jackie and I, we uh, sought the Lord and God gave us a vision. And then we took that vision to Paul and Heidi and we sat down and we revealed it to them. And now we have a very highly successful school of prophecy that is growing, growing as God shows us how to grow this school of prophecy. Praise God. Amen. God is faithful, ladies and gentlemen. L look at, let's take one more assignment. Your finances have spiraled out of control and you now need God's guidance and wisdom on how to keep yourself out of bankruptcy or how to keep you from going off the deep end. It's the word of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. God will show you. He'll speak a word of knowledge to you. He'll speak a word of wisdom, and he will show you where to go and how to get the help you need. These are just these are just two of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, and these are available to believers. These are available. Ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine how easy it is to live for the Lord uh, by trusting him, trusting the Holy Spirit to guide us day by day? If you're stuck on a problem, you can ask God, God, what is this problem? What's happening? If your body's not acting right, Lord, what's happening with my body? And God will give you a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. And then you can go to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, reveal to me, what shall I do? Mute your phones. Mute your phones, neighbors. Mute your phones. We're being recorded. What shall I do, ladies and gentlemen? Mute your phones, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what shall I do, God, about this problem? And God will give you the answer. He may say, go to Dr. So-and-so. He may say, fast three days. He may say, call the elders of the church. Have them lay, lay hands on you, anoint you with oil. God will give you a word of wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, I could tell you story after story after story of how God has use me in ways like this. I told you last week how God had me send a handkerchief, an anointed handkerchief to a lady with cancer and God healed her. He healed her of cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, there are, there's a plethora of ways that God can heal and God can give you a plethora of, of, of ways to get the job done. All we have to do is obey him, obey the Holy Spirit. So, so we praise God for 1 Corinthians chapter 12. God gives us gifts. We, look, we looked at two today. We looked at prophecy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We looked at knowledge and wisdom. Next week, we're going to look at the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. Then we'll follow that with the gift of faith. The gifts of healings. The working of miracles. The discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. See, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is more than speaking in tongues. Some of you listening have been shut down. You turned off the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you were erroneously taught about the gift of tongues. Somebody practiced tongues erroneously. Somebody may have been perpetrating or faking it. They spoke ignorantly and did not align align themselves with the word of God. And so many people, when you teach about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the first thing people think about is tongues. But ladies and gentlemen, there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to have them all and you can have them all. Well, how can I get the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, Pastor Carter? Well, first of all, you, you uh, must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Now, in order to get filled with the Holy Spirit, you must be born again. You must be born again. God wants you to be born again. Being born again means you're saved from sin. There's no condemnation. You will avoid the second death. You'll live forever with God. Hallelujah. You become a part of the body of Christ. You live the rest of this life 
in the arms of Jesus, being led by the Holy Spirit. So honor the Holy Spirit. Ask him to fill you, come into your life, and guide you. And then when troubles come, when the need arises, and you need an answer, you can ask the Holy Spirit, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on, Holy Spirit? And the Holy Spirit will give you the word of knowledge. And then once you receive the word of knowledge, well, Holy Spirit, now what shall I do? How shall I go about this? And the Holy Spirit will give you a word of wisdom. Praise God. Father God, we thank you for this teaching today. We thank you for all the people you brought online on the live church Thank you for our Facebook friends. Thank you for our friends on the website. Thank you for our friends on cell phone and internet. We thank you for our friends all over the world. Thank you for the video. Thank you, Lord, that God, that you're going to change lives if people apply this word to their lives. We thank you for your love for us, for your mercy and your grace. Bless each and every one, Father. And we thank you, Lord. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this message helped you. And if it has helped you, and if I can do anything else to help you, if I can answer any of your questions, give me a call at uh, my, my home phone is 770-559-9710. My cell phone is 404-205-1101. My email is LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. Or you can hit me up on Facebook or you can hit me up at Twitter. And my Twitter address is at B-T-B-M-I-N. God bless you.